Hello, Cryptids. This is us. We have arrived. We have arrived. Here's your mouse, darling. Thank you. Today we're playing the house in Beta Morgana. Um, we're getting into some really serious shit now. Some some real serious shit. So this game ha has um, graphic depictions of violence, several troubling themes centered around abuse. The final door specifically includes torture, murder, beheading, breaking bones, human trafficking, slavery, child abuse, emotional abuse, severed limbs, psychological manipulation, imprisonment resulting in death, suicide, the mention of uh, the mention of murder of sex workers, misogyny, pedophilia, and child sexual abuse. So, Ouch. a lot. There is a lot. A lot. Um, we are on part four of this door. Do it for her. So, do it for her. Do it for her. Uh, those of you just coming back from the ad break, make sure you check out the content warning that I just read off. Um, it is pinned to the chat, so you know feel free to take a look at that. If you uh, can't deal with some of the subject matter that's there, it's totally understandable. It's some really heavy shit. We completely get it. So you know feel free to take off if you need to. Yeah. But if you're here for the train wreck that is this game, hang tight because we're getting started. Get started. Right, ready to click into the game. This time, once it loads, <laughs> there we go. This time to inspect. And now remember, guys, we left off with a choice last time. Choice. Wow. Wow. So we can do it's better to be safe if we want a um an end. It's better to be safe. I would feel better knowing you made it back safely. I'm telling you, I don't need an escort. Oh my god, that's loud. Hold on, hold on. Earphones. But if you insist, you're welcome to accompany me. The brothel's in the back street. If you want, you can even stay for a bit, have a little fun. I think I'll have to pass. <laughs> Maybe one day you'll get that stick out of your ass. Giselle. Giselle. What? Uh, hello. What is it? You've been so quiet. I was getting concerned. It's good to know you're still there. <laughs> I guess I sort of closed off a bit. I'm fine though. No need to worry. Are you sure? Yeah, just, uh, remind me what's going on, with you? You're positive nothing's wrong? <clears throat> positive as positive can be. I what promise. are you doing in there? We aren't up to no good. You are up to bullshit. Up to bullshit. Up to bullshit. I promise, I just want it off. I just convinced Maria to let me escort her back to the brothel. Seriously? Should I not have offered? I didn't think you were thoughtful enough to accompany a lady at home. <laughs> well, it should just all show him that she thinks absolutely nothing of him. <laughs> that's a low blow. I thought that's what Didier would have done, so that's what I did. Oh, I see. Well, make sure she gets back safely then. Is this the same Didier that um, murdered you, Michael? Um. I wouldn't exactly say that he is a, a standard of how you treat people. No. Maybe, maybe correct in this case, but... Hmm. Hmm. I will. Yo, you're just gonna stand there? Get moving or I'll leave you in the dust. <laughs> Alright, this should do. The back streets aren't particularly welcoming to new faces popping up and wandering around after dark. Wouldn't want you to get mugged on your way back. I don't need that on my conscience right now. Alright. Out of curiosity, is the brothel you work at now the same one that was attacked four years ago? Nah, different place. Unless somebody's done something with it, the one from four years ago is still abandoned. 
I've thought about fixing it up, getting everyone back together, but there's not many of us left, and, well, I'm not even sure I want to go back myself, you know? Understandable. What was Morgana like when she was there? Not sure what to tell you. She never talked much, so I'm not sure if she even liked being around us. I can assure you that she did. She's told me that her time at the brothel was one of the few chapters of her life she remembers fondly. If that's true, that's great to hear. There were times I thought maybe we should take her to an orphanage somewhere. But well, you know how my experience living at one of those went, so yeah. But at the same time, it's not like a bunch of whores were going to make better parents. So I was never really sure what the right thing to do was. And then after the raid, well, I felt like shit. She didn't have to be there, but I stupidly thought it was a good idea to keep a little girl in the lawless back streets. I can tell you what the best choice would have been. But I can tell you that her time with you changed her for the better. So you don't you don't need to feel guilty about choosing to keep her there. <sighs> I appreciate it. If it's not too much trouble, could you tell me about Morgana in more detail? It's a bit late tonight, so how about tomorrow? Got something I want to give you, too. Oh? It's nothing much, but you'll see. I'll sneak into the courtyard again tomorrow night. Alright. I'll meet you here. Meet you there, then. Anyway, I'm off. Actually, one last thing before I go. Take this. What, a, a knife? To protect yourself. You sure don't look like you're carrying anything. I'm not, but if I take this, then you... It's fine, I've got two. Well, who is she, Lyra? <laughs> yeah. Walking around with infinite knives. Infinite knives. Infinite weapons that can be used. You have... Collecting pointy things is one of my hobbies. She might be Lyra. She might be. She's Lyra, but like, less of a cat. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound like the safest hobby. Anything with a nice sharp tip sends shivers down my spine. Makes my heart skip a beat. I'm not sure those are appropriate feelings to have about blades. This reminds me of the time Jacopo gave Maria a cartridge. She got pretty excited about that too. I can understand taking an interest in weaponry, but hers seems somewhat excessive. Dangerously so. <clears throat> anyway, I don't see why you shouldn't take it. She has a point. It's dangerous out at night. I'd honestly rather not be carrying a knife at all. What? Why not? They scare you. Ah, I'll be fine. It's only for self-defense, not hurting other people. Really, you don't have to worry about me. I do appreciate the consideration, though. If you say so. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you. It's nothing. Just give it back to me tomorrow night and we're all good. Anyway, see you then. Stay warm. I'm pretty sure I'm dressed much warmer than her. We should get going to... Alright. It is chilly tonight, though. Did you hear that? I thought I had the voice. I did. It came from the bushes over there. I'm gonna go see if I can get a little closer. That's a great idea! A wonderful idea. How about the observation tower? Uh... Do you believe it is? Are we... Are we witnessing a trick? In any other circumstances, I would just walk away and let them be. But she mentioned the tower, so I can't. We should listen in and try not to get caught. Agreed. Several different people have told me the same thing. <coughs> that there's someone being held in the tower. Who was the first to mention it? Michael. You know, the man who showed up yesterday. He's staying in a room in the mansion. 
Ah, the one with the white hair. Yeah, him. Who else told you? Millie. And when he hasn't said anything to me personally, she says no to some as well. I see. There is no need for concern. The only thing in the tower is the Lord's fortune. Trust me, please. Pauline? You know how many enemies the Lord has. You know how many of them would like nothing more than to see him fall. This allegation ha that he has someone imprisoned on his personal property is nothing more than a fabrication by these people. Don't be one of them. Support him. Support me. It's a terrible shame Mel and Nellie think the Lord would do such a thing. Don't listen to him, Pauline. He's lying to you. Should I stay hidden or should I intervene? I believe you more than anyone in the world. You have my complete trust. You know that. But I would still like to see for myself. If there's no one in the tower, then that proves that accusations are baseless. Pauline. I want to trust you even more. So please let me see what's in the observation tower. Please. You say there's no one there, so it shouldn't be any problem, right? Okay. I'll talk to the Lord when he's here tomorrow. I can't let you in without his permission, of course. But once I've spoken to him, I'll take you to see what's in the tower. Thank you. It's getting late. You should head back. Okay. Don't look so glum, Pauline. We'll see each other again tomorrow night, as usual. Yeah. Well, good night. Good night. Sounds like she convinced him. I wouldn't be so sure about that. He could always move Morgana before letting Pauline in. We'll have to keep a close eye on him tomorrow. I know you're out there. What? Show yourself. If you won't come to me, then I'll have to come to you. I have a good idea where you're hiding. Michael. Finally decided to show yourself, did you? How did you know I was there? Simple. I can sense the presence of others. That's hardly what I would call simple for most people. I was hoping to enjoy the show a little longer. Huh? You remember what I said at supper about our little sideshow? What about it? Well, it looks like we have to go off script. Go off what? You still don't get it. <clears throat> he... He sounds pretty agitated, Michael. You need to get out of there. No. Can you not see him, Giselle? What? He's got his hand on his sword. I can't risk turning my back on him. Should have stepped in while Pauline was still around. I don't have many opportunities to do this these days, so I was planning on taking it nice and slow. There are so many obstructions outside, it makes this kind of work difficult. Michael. If you care about the nun, about Pauline, if she really means something to you, then you need to set Morgana free. Keeping her locked up will bring no one anything but pain, and that includes Pauline. And why should I care? Michael! Uh, I felt something resembling a gale. And the next thing I know, the man is inches from me, swinging his sword down. The knife! Miraculously, I managed to get the blade out just in time, catching his sword in mid-descent with a sharp clang. For a very brief moment, a look of perplexity crosses his face. But now's my chance to run. Michael! 
Oh. I stagger from the impact, and as I fall to the ground, I catch sight of it. The curved blade sticking out of my chest. He must have thrown his sword to prevent my escape. Michael? Michael, what's happening? Stay with me. You have to stay with me. I focus on the searing pain spreading through my chest to keep my mind from growing ha any hazier. And I begin crawling, trying to put some distance between us. And from behind, the man slams his heel into my back. How anticlimactic. I thought you'd hold out for a little longer, considering you managed to brandish that knife. Don't. Please, what are you doing? Get away from him. I'm pegging you. Spare him. There's a name engraved in that handle. So it's not even your knife. Maria. Put that down. Michael. Who did you get this from? Answer me. <clears throat> Not feeling cooperative, are we? That knife has always belonged to me. M Maria simply refers to the Virgin Mary. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to find who they are. I know it's not her, at least. <laughs> so Mel, his sister, and this Maria are all colluding with you. W what are you gonna do to them? That should be obvious. Leave them alone! Oh no, why did this have to happen? It's not funny. The more lives you take, the farther you become from human. It's not what you want, is it? I've always been a killer. I've always had this insatiable urge to take life. But I know that you also want to be... Enjoy your reunion with them in the afterlife. Michael! Uh, uh, uh. No! <laughs> At least beg for your life, would you? Owen, oh, please stop this. <laughs> Crawl through the dirt like a worm that you are and beg me to spare you. Why? Why are you doing this? No, please, please stop. <clears throat> Not even a scream, really. <sighs> You're no fun. Stop it. Don't do this. <laughs> no. The man's strange cackling and Giselle's desperate screams begin fading into the distance. I've long since lost any sort of idea about the condition of my body. In my attempts to save Giselle and Morgana, I've managed to not only fail that, but endanger everyone who is kind enough to help me. What have I accomplished? Anything at all? Dun, dun, dun. My, my fucking sinuses are acting alive like no one else. Oh, he used to go honk honk back at the train. Which has conveniently kicked up just as what? we get into this. What? 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 I said you were honk honking back at the train. You're honk honking at the train. <laughs> toot toot toot. Well, that went well. That went very pleasant. <coughs> Ugh. 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 In spec. In spec. We got an achieve while you were out. Oh, which one? Incompetent hero. Oh, nice, nice. We, we, we let her go on her own. If you're certain, very well. 
I appreciate the thought. See ya. Uh, hold on a second. I thought we were letting her go, Michael. Michael! <laughs> hmm, something else you needed? I would like, if you could, for you to tell me about the time you spent with Morgana. Anything you can, no matter how insignificant it may seem. I want to know what kind of life she had there. Hmm, how's tomorrow sound? Tomorrow? I'll sneak into the courtyard tomorrow night. Meet me there and I'll tell you what you want to know. Why not now, though? No real reason, I just need time to sort things through. See you tomorrow night, stay warm. Uh, not even a chance to get a word in. I also feel like I'm dressed much warmer than her. Tomorrow night, that doesn't leave us with much time. Giselle? Giselle? What? Uh, hello? Uh, what time is it? You've been quiet, what I was getting some... <clears throat> don't, I'm uh, sorry. I don't know why I said time. What is it? I was getting concerned. It's good to know you're still there. <clears throat> I have the, I have the allergy nose squirty squirts. Squirt, squirt. I can do the squirt, squirt. Honk! Honk. Uh, I, I guess I sort of dozed off for a bit. I'm fine though, no need to worry. Are you sure? I think we should head back to... We've done about everything we can today. You're right. Running into Maria was a great stroke of luck. Thanks to her, we now have confirmation that the nun is indeed Pauline. And we've potentially convinced Pauline to try and talk to the swordsman. Depending on how things pan out tomorrow, we could be getting very close to accomplishing our goals. I'm sure it'll be smooth sailing, just like with Mel. Right, smooth sailing, great. Mm -hmm, uh -huh. Sure. Uh -huh. I certainly hope so. So, before you go to sleep, do you want to talk for a bit? Listen, you two are adorable, but let's go, let's get on with the story. Come on. Come on. Come on. Of course. In fact, I was about to ask you the same thing. That's what you say, but on the inside, you actually enjoy being surrounded by girls more adorable to me, don't you? <laughs> and you seem to enjoy teasing me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Truthfully, I don't think I've ever wished that you were there to save me more than then. I've never been comfortable in such spirited environments. Put three women in a room and it'll get like that, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna grab the fucking TV. <laughs> He struggles. He has great difficulty. Uh, my nose is running away. It's running away. It's leaving. It's leaving. It's leaving. It can be overstimulating. Yeah, so you guys are gonna have to hear me honk honk occasionally. I'm sorry. Honk shoe, honk shoe. <laughs> I could not have been any more out of my element. I don't know. He seems to fit in pretty well to me. You really think so? He made it. He made for a great plaything. Oh yes, I'm quite good at that, aren't I? How did the coaster from the living room get in here? Did you carry it through? Because I didn't do it. Phew! <laughs> No, maybe it was stuck to the bottom of my cup. Maybe. I will say there is one thing about the whole affair that surprised me. Oh? What would that be? I did not expect that I would be able to have such a normal social interaction. And not because I'm awkward or a poor conversationalist. For most of my life I was cursed, irregular, and you were the only one who didn't treat me like that. That came to be what I saw as normal. And as such, being able to participate in a social gathering like that is a very exotic sensation. It almost feels like it shouldn't be possible. You are normal, Michael. An ordinary man. <sighs> this right here. This is what I wish I had in life. And for me to finally attain it in death. Though I suppose lamenting the details would make me ungrateful. 
I'm glad to have had the experience, though. I'm glad to hear that. So, um... Hmm? I know I've been talking about how much I want to save Morgana, and that hasn't changed. Neither has my desire to change everyone's future. But if you... If you want to leave this place, to go somewhere far away and have a life of your own, you have my full support. You've got everything you ever wanted. You have the right to choose to stay here, live in this time. I wouldn't dream of it. I'm not going to leave you trapped in that darkness. I will not make the same mistake twice. Regardless, there's no point in me choosing a life without you there as well, in the flesh. Okay then. Well, I'll be in here waiting. Hopefully not for long. I really think Morgana and I have a great deal in common. What? One the daughter of God, one a demon child. We are both forced into inhuman roles. Living on our, in our lives of solitude, constantly having things we cared about taken away from us. Including ultimately our lives. The big difference between me and her is that I had you. If you hadn't been there at the end of my mortal life, perhaps I too would have grown to despise those who'd put me through such misery. Curse their very souls. She had no one though. Not a single person to be there for her in her final days. Sorry, my allergies are fucking going nuts today. He has struggled. Big time struggled. Yeah. From what she told us, though, her life wasn't all sorrow and misery. She did eventually come to find happiness in her time to waffle. In fact, she even said that that's where she learned to experience joy. Well, I know that there were a number of girls there. If Maria was one of them, she was particularly close with, perhaps her being here could have a positive effect on Morgana. We'll have to see what she says tomorrow night. That we will. And then our time limit is noon the next day. Did you knock your drink over? No. What was that? Matthew, don't play with the fucking lights. Shut up. Don't fucking bat me. He's like, I bat what I want. I do what I want. He is right. He do what he want. He do what he want. So we'll need to have everything necessary figured out by then. Everything it'll take for her to have a change of heart. I'm not worried one bit. I have complete confidence in you, Michael. I am somewhat worried. What's there to worry about? Here, I'll show you. You can do it a hundred times. So you're planning on cheering me to death? I just want every last bit of you to know I'm rooting for you. I assure you, you've made that abundantly clear. <laughs> hey, um, there was something I wanted to tell you, if that's alright. Yes? When I learned about your past and your body, it came as a big shock to me. That said, I'm confident that you know my feelings for you haven't changed one bit. I do. But what I want you to know is that even if I had found out back then, instead of after having waited hundreds of years for you to return, my feelings still would not change. If you had told me where we were alive, I would have still accepted you. Now, of course I know that's not something you could have come out with so easily. Especially considering everything you went through because of it. We only lived together for a little over a year. And we were only partners for a month. So I understand how difficult it would have been to think I wouldn't push you away. But I'm not sure you grasp just how much I loved you, even then. My wounds ran deeper than even I knew. And then fully healing was simply not possible. Anyone else's touch, anyone else's warmth my heart and body would have rejected. I sincerely wish I had expressed that to you more clearly. Um, honestly. 
so rude. So fucking rude. I can't have shit here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Me? Not you. Fuck you. <laughs> Half the time the trains honked. So rude to me. I was very clearly talking to the train. Bullshit, I think you were talking to me. I did believe at the time that I could start over with you, that we could have a normal life together. Or, well, I fooled myself into believing it. But I could never rid myself of the guilt and the shame at how impossible it was for me to give that to you. I would imagine our future together. You smiling with our children in your arms, playing with them, scolding them, teaching them. And then I would remember that I'm incapable of giving you those children. Of even engaging in the prerequisite acts. You can have the sex, even if both of you have it's a JJ. It's okay. It's okay, Michael. It's possible. We do it. It's possible. Maybe no babies, but I mean... Eh. No babies, but we can do it. You can do it too, Michael. <laughs> and the more I wish for your happiness, the tighter that guilt constricted me. I do apologize for not saying anything. You carry far more weight than any one person should ever have to carry alone. But you don't have to do that anymore. For one, I'll support you no matter what. And in this time, you're normal to everyone. Not only to me. You have allies. You don't have to take everything on yourself anymore. I love you, Michael. I do. I absolutely adore you. Where is this coming from? I wanted to say it, so I did. Is that a problem? No, no problem. You're blushing, aren't you? Your cheeks are as red as tomatoes. Oh, I wish I could see you now. I'm going to open the window. Why? It's night. It's going to be cold. Exactly. I need to cool down. <laughs> Will she get them all hot and bothered? Oh. He can feel it in his penis. He can feel it in the penis. Ah. Uh. What are you eyeing at? It's a spring snow. It's gorgeous. There was hardly a cloud when I was outside earlier, and now it's snowing. <laughs> Are you worried Maria might catch something out in this weather? Hopefully she's in bed by now. I've never seen it snow in the spring before. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention to what lay beyond the dark walls of that house. Maybe. Have you? Have I? I've seen a springtime snow before. Three or four times, perhaps. So not very often, no. Ah. Uh. So you've seen this already. Would it have been better if I hadn't? No, that's not what I'm saying. I just thought it would be nice if it was the first time for both of us. You know something that um could be the first time for the both of you? Hmm? Um, hmm? Mm hmm? Hmm? <laughs> you sound like a little kid. It, it, could, it could be everyone's first time having consensual sex, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. I can do it. Because times that were not consensual, they don't count. They don't count. They don't count against your, your body count. They'll count. No. Is that childish? Well, you know, I don't mind either way. I'm still glad my first time seeing it isn't alone. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Little specks of white drifting through the darkness. Yes, I can see it. It's beautiful. I'm happy I could see this with you too. You 
don't want the wind to throw you off too much now. I think it's time for you to warm back up. Mm. Sorry, I was engrossed by the sight. <laughs> Maybe it will stick and you can see it again tomorrow. The grounds would be quite lovely covered in snow. But for now, you should get some sleep. I suppose. You already passed out once today. You need to make sure you're well rested. Hard to argue with that. I'll be counting on your help, your help again tomorrow. Your help. <laughs> help. Our success or failure depends on how tomorrow goes. That it does. Let's make it count. Good night, Giselle. Good night, Michael. Oh. Oh. Does she hear dot dot dot? There's yeah. something on her mind. Something on her mind. One day until her death. Feels like someone drove a spike through it. What's going on? Am I in the cellar? Someone kidnapped him. Uh oh, he been kidnapped. He was yoinked. Uh, what? My hands are tied behind my back. Uh, what am I doing down here? Uh, wait. Giselle. Giselle. Say something, Giselle. Unable to make any sense out of my circumstances. It's not long after I regain consciousness that panic begins to sink in. And the most unsettling thing of all, the most frightening detail, is the fact that I can't hear her voice. Awake, are we? Are you the one who... Did you just boop him? <laughs> Did you just boop him? I booped him. I can't believe you booped him. What's he, he gonna do about it? <laughs> Kill Michael, probably. <laughs> He's gonna go off script again and kill Michael. No. And it's all because you booped him. No. You sent him over the edge. No. Are you the one who brought me here? What, you don't remember this morning? Morning? Right, I woke up because I heard someone enter the room. And then he hit me over the head. You're not dead at least. That's good. What do you hope to accomplish by tying me up and bringing me down here? Remember what I said last night at supper? About me putting on a little sideshow for you? What? I was reenacting the last supper with you as the guest of honor. Oh, now I see. When you were asking if I had family or friends, you were trying to find out if anyone would notice I had disappeared, if anyone would make any noise. You're sharper than you look. If only you'd caught on yesterday. <sighs> Please, Giselle, say something. Giselle! Why won't you answer me? Why can't I hear your voice? Why can't I feel you there? You're a quiet one. I thought you'd be a little louder. Ugh. What made you decide to get rid of me? Did the nun say something? She has nothing to do with this. I have permission from the Lord to act at my own discretion. Did I come across anyone acting suspicious? This doesn't seem the least bit wrong to you. I wouldn't say that. You're an acquaintance's friend who made a long trip to come see him, and I have you tied up in the cellar. That's not what I would consider right, no. But seeing as you're good enough friends for him to let you stay here, I assume he's also spilled everything. He never had what it took, that boy. If I were to guess, it got to be too much for him to handle, so he went to a friend. To you. Leave him out of this. I see. 
But how much did he tell you? If you come clean, I might even let you go. Get rid of him. Uh, get rid of him. Have you take his place. I said leave him out of this. So you're determined not to talk, are you? I was struggling to, like, read that sentence. Yeah. I was like, what? Ugh. That don't make sense. I feel like my head is floating in a jar of water. Oh. What a loyal friend. Listen to me. Listen. Oh, I'm listening. Okay, because I'm you have a lot of talking to do. Okay, Fine. Nice. You can do it. Fine. Boop. Fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you disgust me. Pooping me. Boop. Pooping me. Disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> uh. I don't have many chances to let loose. So I'll be taking as much time as I can get today. He says in an eerily flat tone of voice as he draws near, pausing between each step as if to taunt me. And when he reaches me, struggling to get off the ground. Ah! He slams his heel into my shoulder. Not being able to use your hands makes you appreciate how much easier it is to stand up when you can, doesn't it? Help! Someone! Help! Please! Help! Ugh. Don't waste your energy. No one ever comes back this far. And the door is so heavy your screams would never make it out. So, wait. Bad end, he's mad that he's not screaming. Now he's screaming and he's like, mm, don't scream. Like, don't scream. Like, what the fuck do you want? The fuck do you want? The fuck do you want? Make it make sense. But that's the least of your worries. The door to the cellar's been locked, and the only key is right here. There's no getting in. If you can run fast enough, you might have a chance of making it to the door and escaping. Want to test your luck? I doubt you can make it. Uh, uh. He puts the full weight of his body onto his heel, pressing down on my spine, turning my breaths into gasping sputters. I gather together all of my strength, but even that isn't enough to overpower him. Now you're going to tell me everything. What are you and the boys scheming? What's your endgame? Who else is in on it? Ugh. Damn it! I don't have many options here. What can I even do in this situation? Tell me what I want to know, and maybe I'll let you live. I guess I have no choice but to tell him the truth. All right, fine, I'll tell you everything. Just know that this isn't some attempt to beg for mercy. I came to this mansion to unlock the door through the observation tower and free Morgana. Mel was not the one who told me about her, though. I went to him and asked for his assistance. He didn't have to tell me because I already knew. Both about her and what you're doing to her, stealing her blood and making medicine from it. Who told you then? Morgana did. Morgana's soul told me everything. I'm not from this time. I lived in a time after her death. It takes me several moments to process what just happened. A fire runs up my arm from my little finger, turning into pain when it finally reaches my brain. I twist my head to see the man on top of me holding my right hand. My fingers snap backwards at the second joint. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, uh, uh. I'll ask you again. Who told you? Uh, Morgana did. She dies on the day of the Harvest Festival. Next up is your ring finger. And then your middle if you insist on keeping this up. I'm telling you the truth. She bears so much hatred, she cast a curse on your souls. I've seen what happens in your next life. Uh, uh, uh. Now you're resorting to souls and next lives. I'm genuinely impressed. What lives are you going to cook up next, white-haired knave? Uh, uh. If you don't set Morgana free, your souls will be enslaved for all eternity. Imprisoned in this cursed mansion. 
When the bell tolls noon on the day of the Harvest Festival, you'll lose everything. All of you will. You cannot escape it unless you do something. And the nun, the reason you left Morgana up in the first place. She won't be safe either. She'll be killed. <laughs> Two fingers left. Can you keep up the act that long? <sighs> Everything I'm saying is the truth. I've seen it all with my own two eyes. Why are you so insistent on maintaining this farce? Is it to protect the boy or do you have some other motive? Every last word is true. Continuing to lie isn't going to make this any easier. Your voice is shaking. The pain's starting to get to you, isn't it? But what you're doing to Morgana, it achieves nothing. You must release her and atone for your sins. Otherwise your soul, and the souls of those you care about, will be doomed to suffering. I see what this is now. You don't have the information I want, so all you can do is spin these lies. Ugh, you thick skulled bastard! There are other options, though. Beg me for mercy. Sob like a little child, sibling. Your, please don't kill me, and I don't want to die. And it hurts bad. Please stop. Grovel on the ground, you tiny, pathetic man. And if you can entertain me, maybe I'll consider it. I will never shed another tear. And I will never beg for your damn mercy. Nothing I've said to you has been a lie. Some cheap attempt to fool you into letting me go. Every word of it is true. I know the sins you've burdened your soul with. I know the fate that awaits you in your next life, and I will gladly tell you every detail. Uh, uh. You're down to just your thumb. Now go on, if you're so eager to tell me. <laughs> he clicked the wrong button. <laughs> He clicked the wrong button. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, he was not paying attention. No. <laughs> you sent us back to the the fucking the starting, starting screen. screen the, yeah. The press X to, 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 to Yeah. Start. Oops. I didn't mean that. What were you thinking about? What was so big in the mind? What was the preoccupation? <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> Just... Are you shitting me? I was I was also thinking about how fucking painful and what position his fingers must be in right now. And I was like cringing internally and was trying my hardest not to pay attention so I wouldn't freak out. <laughs> like his can you imagine how that looks? I mean, roughly, it would look like this, but, like, with the hand the other way. It, it would look a lot like that. Uh. But, like, with every finger. I'm gonna accidentally break a finger trying to fucking demonstrate. I'm gonna stop. We don't have that kind of money. No. Let's hear about my supposed next life, shall we? Mm-hmm. <laughs> In your next life, you lose your memory in an accident, causing you to forget your own humanity. The innate savagery you normally keep hidden beneath a mask is released, unrestricted. And you turn into a creature no more than- No, you turn into a beast. My mask. You murder countless people, including the woman you once called your lover. Your lover. Hers is a name you know very well. Pauline, your tether. My tether, how did you know that word? Because I know everything. I know what you wanted. I know that you were never able what you were never able to obtain. You idolized humanity and you yearned for peace. You're telling me I killed a nun in my next life. I am. That fate is that is the fate that lies waiting for you. Her love for you is so strong she refuses to believe that you're dead. She leaves her seaside hometown in search of you and she finds you. But you, you slaughter her. Did you say she lived in a town on the sea? In addition to her, you also lose someone else. 
a woman who tried to give you the peace you so desired, which eventually causes you to succumb entirely to instinct. Enough! <laughs> Alright, fine. Now I know what you are. You're no mere seasoned liar. You're some kind of evil spirit that deceives humans. You're peering into my heart, tailoring your lies specifically to manipulate me. Uh, I am not. I swear I've seen everything that happens. Enough! But there's a chance you can change your fate. All you have to do is cease your involvement in Morgana's imprisonment, set her free, allay the hatred she bears for you. Are you deaf? I've said, I've heard, enough. Release Morgana. Save your soul, give her a better future. Silence! Uh, uh, uh. Okay, I think I'll take your arm off first. Cut right through your shoulder nice and slowly. Don't! <laughs> still be attached for a while don't you worry you hear that spirit that's the sound of your flesh ripping apart the sound of your muscles being severed oh i, I thought he was attacking michael uh. not you why are you the one being attacked uh. <laughs> are you okay yeah is this what you get for booping him this is what i get for booping him <laughs> this is what happens when you give me the most <laughs> I, I think this, you know, I, I think the last time I played this, the story went differently. I don't think he acted nearly as savagely when you didn't boop him, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I could be pulling this out my arse. <laughs> could be making it up. I could be full of shite. Full of shite. Could be. I never said I was. I just said I you could, could be. be. Could be. Could be. Uh, you almost fucking did it again. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Which one am I gonna click? Which one am I gonna click? Huh. <sighs> Not gonna do as much talking anymore, are you? Not through the pain, you aren't. <laughs> Plead for your life, spirit. Beg for mercy. Well, spirit, we're listening. Please don't kill me. Please. Please, no death. Please, no death for me. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. We'll find out if he kills you. What do you guys think? You think Spirit's gonna die? Yes or yes? <laughs> Let the room fill with your cries of agony. Nothing was a sham. Every last word, it's all the truth. I'll rip that head right off your shoulders. I don't care who or what you are anymore. You're dead! Is this the Lord, or is this the nun? I think it's the nun, but I don't know. You will do no such thing. It's the nun. Look at me! Will... Get back! You will not harm him further. Pa Pauline. What? What are you doing here, Pauline? I told you to stay away. And the door, the door was locked. I opened it. You! One of Nellie's hairpins was long enough to get into the lock and undo it. You won't be getting much use out of it anymore, though. Busted it up pretty badly in the process. The locks on the tower door are too complex, but this one here is a lot simpler. But you never expected me to go cat burglar on you, hmm? You stupid boy! Oh, what was your question last night again? Something about being on the edge of a cliff or whatever? Well, here's your answer. I'll do everything I can to save both of them. This is terrible. Who could you? Oh my, you're, you're badly hurt. 
That's right, I'll call for a doctor. Don't worry about me. You need to talk to him. To get him to talk. You've got to do something about you, though. I'll get that wound patched up at least. Uh, until we can get it taken, uh, taken care of properly. Thank you. Was it you who went to get Pauline? No, I ran into her while I was looking for you. Which is when she told me she was looking for him. Neither of us were having any luck, so we scoured the mansion together. And when we reached the stairs to the cellar and heard the screaming, my worst fears were confirmed. So I picked the lock and here we are. I'm sorry we didn't make it sooner. This could have all been avoided. God, look at what he did to you. There's so much blood in your fingers. No, you made it just in time. My arm is still attached and I'm not dead. Neither of which would be true without you. So I guess that means I actually did something good for once. Did something for someone other than myself. That you did. So everything my book said is true? The law doesn't call in putting the valuables in the cellar. He's got a girl locked up here. Well, is it true or not? It's still the Lord's property either way. <laughs> the church is being funded with her miracle blood. So that makes her valuable, yes. So you're saying I've been handing out human blood and telling people of this medicine? Not human. Which? No, Morgana's a human girl. She hasn't become a witch yet, at least not here. All this time, I've been lying to the people who believe in me without even knowing what I was doing. Like you said, you didn't know. You haven't done anything wrong. Ignorance does not excuse sin. All that time I spent with you, I didn't notice anything wrong. That was the idea. You weren't supposed to notice anything. It's not your fault I deceived you. Liz, it's unreasonable to think that you should have been able to. Oh, that. You did it to help me, though, didn't you? With your stupid little girl, I assumed it was out of all the pain of your heart. Never once stopping to think any deeper than that about where it was all coming from. Maybe I was right. I was blind. I was content to be pleased about people I thought I was helping. I want you to do something for me. I want you to set this girl, set Morgana free. Please do not make your sins any greater than they already are. But without the witch's blood, we lose the Lord's patronage and then the church. What good is a church that isn't actually saving anyone? Actually, no. That's avoiding the point entirely. What do you mean? To, to tell you the truth, I... I never really cared about the church at all. Oh, Pauline! Pauline. Dun, dun, dun. What? How can you say that when you've always been so unconditionally charitable? Even if it meant giving away food or money you needed yourself. People call you the saintess because that's what you are, a saint. It's true, I do do that. But the fact is, I'm no saint. I don't deserve to be held up as one, nor do I belong in that position. I'm just an ordinary girl. I never wanted to be a nun, you know. I just didn't have any other options available to me. And I sure didn't have the confidence to make it out there on my own like Maria. So I did as I was told. And to keep myself from thinking it was a mistake, from feeling dissatisfied with that choice, I put everything I had into my responsibilities to the church. My unconditional charity was rooted entirely in selfishness, and the longer I kept it up, the harder it became to stop. I forgot what I really wanted. And what would that be? A normal, happy life, as an ordinary girl. In a city on the water. What? That's what you said your dream was for your next life. Oh, right. 
Yeah, a quiet life with the man I love. You might, you might get that wish in fact. Huh? You, that's what you said, wasn't it? That her next life, she lives in a city by the sea. That's correct. In your next life, Pauline, you are not a nun. You're an ordinary girl who lives in a seaside city. A sweet, cheerful, energetic girl who wears her heart on her sleeve. You have both your mother and father. And I. Do you believe me now? I don't know. Your claims are utterly ridiculous, but it's getting harder to think that you're lying. If that's what you really wanted, Pauline, what should I have done instead? I envied what you had, that solace. The last thing I wanted was for you to lose it. But you're saying you found no peace in that life? That's right. So what should I have done? Mm hmm. I have some ideas. You have some ideas? I have some ideas. Maybe you shouldn't have cut off Morgana's arm and put her in the fucking tower! Ah! <clears throat> but that's just an idea. Just an idea. Something I've been workshopping. Yeah. I wanted you to take me away from this place. Somewhere far away. I wanted you to make it so I could be Pauline. Not Marie. That would have been my ideal life. To live with you. To have a family with you. How? How was I supposed to know? You couldn't possibly have known. I realised that. And that makes me every bit as complicit as you. Set Morgana free. I will be expected to pay for my crimes. That itself is not a problem. I have every intention of facing the consequences. But we have done terrible, gruesome things. I don't know what the usual punishment for for that is in such a land. But if I had to guess, I would say execution. And me being an outsider, it makes it easier for people to place the blame on me. I won't be able to take you away. find each other again in our next lives, okay? Okay. Oh my god! Oh my god. We have the swordsman on our side! Finally. It looked impossible! But we did it! We did it! As I'm sure you heard, my involvement in this conspiracy ends here. I'm glad to hear that you've decided to take action. Sorry about your fingers and arm. I'm still alive, and that's what matters. The third key is in the Lord's possession. You said you needed it by noon of the Harvest Festival, yes? Which means we need to act quickly. That's correct. We must set Morgana free before the bell tolls noon tomorrow. Then tonight, that's the time the Lord will be here. Tonight, I'll kill him and we'll take his key. Wait! No! We're not shedding any blood to get his key. Do you remember what I said a few minutes ago about not committing any global sins? He, he just trying to do what he know how to do. He know only one thing, and that's Mordor. He know only Mordor. <laughs> He and Sun are on the same playing field. They only know Mortar. Only know Mortar. He is not likely to hand over his key without a fight, though. And we need to convince him, not force his hand. Besides, simply opening the door is not enough. Why not? My goal here is to save her soul. In order to do that, I need to pacify at least some degree of the hatred she bears in it. A hatred rooted in her perception of you and the things you've done to her. I need to change that perception. I'm not quite following. What do you mean by change her perception? For you and the Lord to tell your stories, to describe what happened from your perspectives. You want my perspective? I do. 
something in your motivation or circumstances that might serve to lessen the animosity she holds towards you. The greater the discrepancy in what she believes to be the truth in the full story, with everyone's perspectives included, the greater the chance that she may have a, cha a change of heart. Okay, now I understand what you want from me. However, my perspective will do nothing to serve that end. There is no ambiguity, no justification for my actions. Regardless, I would still like to know the whole truth if you're willing to tell me you're part of it. Okay. I'll come by your room later today. Hey, is it alright if I'm there too? Sorry, I would rather if you weren't. Why? Everything you need to know, I've told you already. I've captured a witch, no I kidnapped a young girl for profit and imprisoned her in the tower. My motivation, as I said, was to keep your church funded. Those are the facts. Things I did along the way were brutal and inhumane. I hope you can understand why I wouldn't want the woman I love to hear any of that. I understand. I'll see you again later in the day. I'll be waiting. I should get going to you're going to take medication and something to get that arm dressed properly. And if there's anything else I can get you, please let me know. If you want to see a doctor, I'll find you the best one I can. I'm so sorry for ever doubting you. No, I understand. I'm glad you came at all. Me too. Well, see you. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> He's actually got a soft spot, huh? And I was sure you were full of it when you said the two of them had a thing going. What does she see in a guy like him anyway? She's got a bad taste in guys, that's for sure. Well, what's with that look? Just admiring your rather inappropriate remarks. Sorry, I was just so relieved it kind of came out. It's okay. You almost got a smile out of me. I've never seen you smile before. I blame being relieved, too. Now would you mind helping me get back to my room? <laughs> sure, no problem. My shoulder's all yours. You know, you really are something else, Michael. I could hear you through the door as I was getting it open, and... To be honest, I'm ama I'm amazed that you were able to stand up to him like that. I, I don't want to get my hopes up too high yet, but I'm thinking that you might be able to do something about the Lord. That's reassuring. Thank you. Sure. Anyway, let's get going. You should get as much rest as you can until he shows up. Well, I mean, you should be going to see a doctor with these wounds. Oh, yeah, Nellie's been worried sick about you all day. I'll have to tell her not to pounce on you, because I'm sure she'll come running as soon as she hears we found you. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break right here. We will be right back, but it's fine. You can enjoy the gizmo time. The gizmo.
Gizmo go om nom nom.
We have returned. Returned. Return. And yes, Gizmo went om nom nom. <clears throat> Gizmo go om nom nom. He enjoyed his kill. You know, once I got it to him. <laughs> dropping it like three times. Gizelle. You were right, I do have people who will support me. People who are grateful for me, and people who will show concern for me. But you have to know, Giselle, that it's your voice I want to hear more than anyone else's. Why can I not hear you? Where are you, Giselle? Giselle. It's almost sunset. Looks like the snow didn't stick. You couldn't actually see the snow last night, could you, Giselle? Was that when the light started fading from the sphere of darkness encasing you? Or had it been going on even longer than that? Why didn't you say anything? Not a word. I don't believe you're gone for good. You're still out there somewhere. I know it. And I will come for you. I swear it. Ah, and it's fair. I will also come for you. Ooh. Just a moment. Here I am, as promised. I heard you talking, so I thought there was someone with you. But you're alone. It's only me, yes. I see. As I told you earlier, my perspective. Can't believe I'm being interrupted by a fucking cat. <laughs> my perspective on events will do nothing to change Morgana's mind. Nagito! Why is she screaming, baby? Nagito, baby! The pets, is that what you want? He desires attention. There, you've been pets. Are you okay? Meh. Nakito. I would still like to hear what you have to say. Hmm. All right. Not being from this land, I don't believe in the local god, nor do I think the priests or preachers are any better than con artists. Where did that come from? What I'm trying to say is that if I give a confessional, it won't be to another human. You're an angel. Come again? The angel on the stained glass window, that's you, isn't it? Wait, how on earth did you come to that conclusion? I was thinking about everything you said earlier in the cellar. The fact that you knew about Morgana, the fact that you could see into my heart, and in particular... All of your talk about saving people's souls. Salvation is not a man's job. Which means you must be something else. I'm... I will tell you everything. Every foolish mistake, every terrible crime. And in exchange, I would like you to tell me what I am to do next. To lead me down the path I am to take. I... I terrify myself. With every passing day, my ability to tell what direction I'm supposed to be heading in dulls. So after I tell my story, I want you to do that for me. Please, will you show me the way? I... I can no more decide the path for you to take than you. But you saw into my heart. Giselle, if you were here, you would encourage me to agree with his request, wouldn't you? Okay. I can't guarantee that anything I have to say will be of use, but I will do the best I can to lead you in the right direction. Thank you. Now before I begin, there's one thing I need to clarify. I am not in love with Pauline. She does play an important role in my life, though. That much is true. She's your tether. Exactly. I also suppose you could say I admire her. 
She's everything that I'm not, everything that I cannot be. Is that something I should tell her, you think? That I don't love her, that I'm incapable of feeling love? Should I tell her that, knowing that she genuinely loves me? Honestly, probably not. I would say no, because he's likely to be executed anyway. So better let her, you know, die with thinking that she, that she was loved mm -hmm. than to say, no, I don't love you. You know, I just kind of admire you as a person and think that you're strong. Mm -hmm. Because as much as that's a compliment, it would shatter her. Yeah. My instincts tell me I shouldn't. I know very well that I'm lying to her. But there are circumstances in which a lie is preferable to the truth, are there not? With that said, I'm ready to begin. You have my full attention. As you know, I'm not of this land. The issue is, I don't know any more about where I came from than you. I remember the Silk Road stretching out before me as far as the eye can see. Clouds of dust wisping around the bare dirt trail. The endless expanse of red earth. Remains branded into my very fabric of my mind. But beyond that, most of my memories are gone. Oh, pretty. It kind of looks like outside right now. Yeah, it does. That's what the sky looks like outside just now. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I can only re clearly remember the last five or so years of my life. In my oldest memory, I was a slave. I didn't work on some noble's men's estate, but instead I did physical labor, construction work. I built roads, buildings, tore down hills and mountains. That's where I decided someone, where it was decided someone built like I am would be the most use, I suppose. And while I doubt I need to tell you this, living conditions were miserable. Other slaves withered away and died on a daily basis. Working at a noble's estate would have been easier without a doubt, if for only the fact that I would have a, sp a specific master. I don't remember anything about my life before becoming a slave. All I have are those few images from which I can guess I was part of a caravan, or perhaps a messenger. I vaguely remember being waylaid. We were vastly outnumbered, massacred with little resistance. Or at least I assume that's what happened. When I next woke up, I had been stripped bare and was surrounded by men I didn't recognize. The words they spoke were gibberish to my ears, but I could tell from their tone of voice and expressions that the things they said were not friendly. They seemed to be mocking me, laughing at me, and as you might expect, I, ex I attempted to protest, but evidently, I had been beaten quite badly while I was unconscious. My joints were stiff and swollen. On top of my de dehydration, I could barely move, let alone put up a fight. As strong as I might have been at full health, I was in no condition to do anything then. You have no idea what it's like. How it feels to be abused, humiliated, desperate for food and water. Hum. Hmm. Hum, 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 hum. Does he not? Does, does he not, though? I feel like he does. I feel like he does. Just an inkling that Michael might know how that feels. Just just a slight inkling. Oh, I see. So, as I was saying, I was a slave from one grueling, torturous year. And no one treated me like a human being. There was no one from the same part of the world as me. And there was no one to come to my aid. Over time, I came to learn their language. Though, I can only speak it. I don't know how to read or write. But to be honest, I think I was happier not understanding what people were saying about me. They had many words to describe me, none of them flattering. Some of them would even call me beast. The longer I was treated as something less than human, the more I began to question whether I really was one. A darkness grew inside me with each repeated insult. I wanted to make them pay for the daily abuse. And who wouldn't? The desire to exact vengeance has been... Uh, once you've been mistreated, it's only natural. It's perfectly reasonable. <sighs> but they were right about what I was deep down. A beast, and my revenge went far beyond what could be considered reasonable. Four years ago, 
I was sitting in a carriage that rattled along the dirt road. This was not the kind of carriage you rode around in, but a filthy slave transport. It was packed from front to back with slaves, or soon to be slaves, I suppose I should say. There were men, young women, and even children. Everyone wore a look of hopelessness on their face, and no one had the strength left to resist. They looked like me a year earlier, deprived of food and water and beaten into submission. The slave traders' guards were armed, of course. Swords hung from their hips, ready to cut down anyone who showed any sign of resistance. So they sat there, lamenting their fate. Sitting beside me was a young girl, crying in silence. Glancing over at her, I caught a glimpse of her face. A large chunk of skin seemed to have fallen off of it. It was, suffice to say, an unusual sight. But beyond that, I didn't think much of it. I didn't even find it disturbing or unpleasant. Perhaps because I had a similarly unusual appearance. What caught my attention, though, was the way that she was crying. I'm not sure how to describe it, but it seemed hugely different from everyone else crying in the carriage. It was almost like her tears were not for herself. Why are you crying? At my question, the girl turned up her head to look at me. Surprise crossed her face for a few brief seconds, but that was her only reaction to my appearance. I assumed her thought process was roughly the same as mine, so she felt no need to fear me. After a moment's hesitation, she said, I'm sad because I didn't get the chance to show my gratitude to people very dear to me. Her response perplexed me to no end. Why was she concerned about showing gratitude? Why was she not despairing her own circumstances? Why was that the emotion that gripped her in that moment, and not hatred for the slave trader or sorrow for herself? To this day, I still don't understand. But that wasn't the only thing I found curious. Her voice, despite being soft, cut through the crying and wailing of the other slaves. I pictured it like a single patch of clear water in the middle of a swamp, untainted by its surroundings, gently undulating. One sentence was all she said, but there was something unbelievably calming about the sound of it. For a moment I was filled with a sense of tranquility. And though you may not believe it, I wanted to get her out of that filthy carriage, to undo the shackles threatening to taint her. And so I took action driven by that desire. This is no lie, I promise. No, no, don't kill me. Please, you can have all my money. You can go free if that's what you want. I'll apologize. Anything. Huh. What, why are you laughing? Please, spare me. <laughs> I, I have a wife and children, please. <laughs> Holding the sword in my hand felt amazingly bright. Whatever work I once did must have required me to use a blade. Even with the shackles around my wrists, I had little trouble slaughtering the slave traders and their guards. They let their guard down because we were restrained. The thought of anyone resisting never crossed their minds. Dead bodies sprawled out around me. Corpses I had made. Lives I had snuffed out. Look at this. See? No one can defeat me. <laughs> they stood no chance against my strength. <laughs> more. I need more. I need more! I don't have words to describe the high it gave me killing those men. The power I felt over them. I was driven mad by the stench of blood filling the air. No, it just drew out what was already there. If I weren't already deranged, the corpses would have had nothing to stimulate in the first place. After taking the keys off one of the slave traders, I returned to the carriage, doing my best to act calm and suppress the bubbling exhilaration. Hey, you, unlock my shackles for me. I would do it myself if I could. You. Say something, would you? 
but she said nothing, simply removing my shackles as commanded. If she had, if she had said even one word, let me hear that curiously calming voice of hers, then in all likelihood I probably would have stopped there. But she remained perfectly silent. Everyone was in shock at what they had just witnessed, her included. In time, though, the slaves started cheering. The same people who'd been wailing moments earlier were now shouting praises. Our savior! You are our savior! We're free to go home! We can have our lives back! Undo our shackles, please! I'm a beast. What? I'm not a savior, I'm not a man, I'm a beast. Isn't that right? I'm a beast, aren't I? Who are you? More. I need more. I thirst for more. What, why, why are you pointing your... I need more! In that moment, the last of my reason dissolved. I went into a frenzy, slaughtering the helpless slaves I'd never intended to kill. I was euphoric. I couldn't get enough. I reveled in it. Never before had I felt such utter ecstasy. Their cries for mercy as I ripped through them were delicious. The look of fear in their eyes. The way their faces twisted. The splatters of blood around their mouths open in screams. The despair that filled them. I didn't care anymore that they were just as much victims as me. That they had suffered the same abuse and humiliation. All of that was buried beneath the waves of bliss that ravished me. Everyone who asked to be spared, I skewered. I worked my way around the inside of the carriage, killing dozens upon dozens of slaves. Heads went rolling off shoulders, hot geysers of blood spewing from open necks. I was practically wading through blood by that point. Some bodies I completely dismembered. Others I disemboweled, and leaving their entrails to hang out of their open guts. All of them had looks of agony frozen onto their faces as death took them. I don't know if I was unconsciously avoiding her, or if it was just a coincidence. But the girl was the only one left alive. She, of course, hadn't been spared the mess, so she sat there, drenched in sticky red gore. Her lips appeared to be trembling, though I couldn't tell for sure with so much of her skin missing. The fire inside me burned white hot. She was the reason I had done any of this in the first place. I'd stood up because she wanted to be, because I wanted to set her free. My original intentions were long gone from my mind. Raw pleasure overwhelmed any sense of reason. I approached the girl, pointing the sword at her neck. I expected her to scream to beg for her life like the others. But she did nothing, simply stared up at me. Why didn't you run? At my question, the girl firmly spoke. Why did you kill them? The sound of her voice quelled the fervor within me. It baffled me. I had no control over it, yet this strange girl could pacify me with a single utterance. The words she used didn't matter, it was her voice. She could have called me a monster, and it would have had the same effect. Because I felt like it. I couldn't explain my reason for murdering the slaves. I didn't have the words to express the things that drove me. All I could tell was that I did it because I felt like it. And why haven't you killed me yet? I couldn't find a sure answer for that question in my somewhat rattled mind either. In retrospect, I realize now that her voice was my first tether. But at the time, I had no idea why I didn't take her life in my frenzy. I had killed other children, other women. Young, old, sad, miserable. It didn't matter. Nothing had so much pricked my conscience. I don't know. I said, and then I stepped off the carriage and walked away. Left with questions I couldn't answer. Was I really a beast? Was I unleashing my innate savagery and reveling in the massacre of helpless people? And was that all I really wanted? I didn't know. After escaping the slave traders, I became something of a bandit. I had no hope of anyone taking me in. Not only was I a murderer, I was a foreigner. Nor did I have any chance of finding decent work. So I lived by the sword, killing and plundering. The money, honestly, I didn't give a, sh a damn about. 
I had no desire to be wealthy. It was simply a matter of survival. That and quenching my thirst. I went on for the for about three years like that. Until finally I encountered something I couldn't defeat with my sword. No amount of muscle was enough to protect myself from disease. One day I woke up with chills, my vision blurry, barely able to move my own limbs. I set off for a nearby village, hoping to see a doctor, but my body didn't last that long. I collapsed on the side of the road, drained of my last strength. It was a moderately busy road, so I assumed I'd made it close to the city. Dozens of people passed by, silently pretending not to see anything. I didn't look like someone a respectable person would want to involve themselves with in normal circumstances, so it was no surprise they weren't interested in the sick, filthy foreign man. Hell, I couldn't remember the last time I'd bathed. It was hard to look at me, let alone get anywhere near me. This is where I'm going to die, I thought. It seemed like a suitable end to a mad, murderous monster's life, withering away on the side of the road beneath the sneering passers-by. The fact that I was still alive after three years of leeching off of other people's lives was itself wrong. I didn't lament my impending demise. I accepted that that was such the way of the world. But then, I glanced up to see a woman in a nun's habit looking down on me. Are, are you alright? Are you sick? I'm going to check your temperature, okay? Oh, wow, you're bonding up. You shouldn't be out here in this condition. Do you not have anywhere to go? Don't worry, I've got you covered. There's a church not too far from here. Hang in there just a little longer and you'll be fine. And what is your God going to do for me? Uh, he helps people in need. <laughs> it's not very big, but we've always got room for people who need it. You can rest up in one of the open beds, and I should be able to get you a little something to eat. I promise it will be better than staying out here at any rate. Can you stand? Um, not a problem. We can do this together. Put your arm around my shoulders. The church isn't that far. We can do it. You are going to carry me? Yep. It'll be fine. We'll make it one way or another. <laughs> almost. We're almost there. Just a little longer. I'm heavy, aren't I? Very, very heavy, but that's not a problem. I can do anything if I put my mind to it. Just throw me into a ditch. No, no, God doesn't like his children talking like that. Almost there. We're almost there. So, how are you feeling? Better, I hope. I've left some applesauce on the bedstand if you're feeling up eating anything. And you're welcome to stay here as long as you need to. But why did you help me? Because that's what people do. They help each other. That's not what most people do. I, I like to think it is. You church people are exceptional. I'm not sure I agree with that. This woman is only showing me compassion because she doesn't know what I am. She wouldn't be so friendly if she knew I was a madman and a murderer. If there's anything else you want, let me know. I can't make you any fancy dinner, but if it's anything I can get, I will. Could you tell me your name? I'm... I'm Marie. Marie. After, uh, who was it? The Virgin? You're not familiar with the Virgin Mary? Just look at me. I'm clearly not from these parts. Oh, yeah. I can see that. So that would make you a traveler, hmm? You speak the language really well, though. 
I take it you've been here a while then. Yes, I have. How exciting. So when you're feeling better, maybe you could tell me about the country you came from. I've never been far from home, so I'm curious what it's like elsewhere. There's nothing I could tell you. It can be anything. Tell me about yourself if you want. I'm even less inclined to do that. Get better soon, okay? I'm looking forward to hearing all about it. I'm not sure there's anyone out there more deserving of the Virgin Mary's name. What was that? Your name, it suits you. Oh no, not at all. I'm incredibly flattered to hear you say that, but I hardly live up to the name. What's your name, by the way? I... I have no name. You... don't? If you want something to call me by, you can choose a name for me. Anything you want. Um... I'm nameless. You can give me a name. Hello, welcome in. Hello! That is such a cute little wavy thingy. That is so cute. It's a bit of wavy. It's a wavy. It's a wavy. I think you should be the one to choose your name. You know what this whole scene reminds me of? It's like whenever you're playing an RPG, like an old NES or like Game Boy era RPG, and it's like, this is your friend. What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how the fuck should I know? He's my friend. He came with a name. He came out the womb with a name. How am I to know? How am I supposed to know what his name is? I'd be more than happy to help, though. Oh, it is. This is actually my second time playing it through. Um, when I first started this channel, when it was back when it was just me, um, and back when I actually wasn't VTubing, I was flesh tubing. Um, I played this as one of my very first games, and I fucking loved it so i decided that eventually i was going to play it through again with spirit um it's definitely a lot more manageable playing it with somebody else because there are so many different characters and so many different voices and i try but i just do not have the vocal range to do everybody yeah so <laughs> having somebody help with the voices makes it so much better but i would go as far as to say this is probably my this is definitely my favorite visual novel and it's probably one of my favorite games of all time it's so fucking good. I just fucking love it. It is really good. I love it. Jacopo is an unlovable bastard, but I love it. <laughs> but you should go with the name you think is best. I see. Well, I should get going. I'll be around, so if you need anything, just holler. Bye then. How am I supposed to choose a name for myself when I don't know anything about me? I recovered quickly with a proper bed and a roof over my head. Out on the road I'd been certain I stood no chance, but I was back on my feet after only three days at the church. My body was more resilient than I ever knew. And now I was back in hell. I had no intention of sticking around. Thank you for everything. I would be dead if it weren't for you. No thanks necessary. I'm just glad to see you're feeling better. There's no need to be in such a rush to leave, you know. Stay a bit longer. Make sure everything's alright. What the fuck is she holding? I don't know what she's holding. I have no idea what that is. I don't know if she's holding something or if it's this pod for her waist. It could be the cord around her waist. Okay. Because I think there's like two feathers here. And then it looks like a bow. Okay, maybe it's just the cord around her waist. It's just the way her hand is, it looks like she's holding something. It does, yeah. The visuals in this one are definitely a little bit different than the, the remake, remaster thing mm -hmm. of it. Uh huh. So, like, there are just some things I know. Like, hmm. What? Mm. What? What? God bless you, Spoozy. I'm not going to stay any longer than necessary. If you're sure. Take this as payment for the food and lodgings. I, I can't accept that, no. We don't charge for charity. Charity isn't free. You paid for it, let me pay you back. 
I can. Please take the money. If you insist, I can accept it as a tithe. A tithe? Think of it like a donation to the church. Like you said, the work you do is a fee. Alright then, a tithe it is. Thank you. And may God bless you for your generosity. So long. Hey, if you're ever in the area, maybe you could stop by sometime. I never did get the chance to have that talk with you. And I was really looking forward to it too. I'll just cause you more trouble. What? No, you wouldn't. What makes you think that? Are you afraid you'll scare people off because you look different? I really don't think you need to be worried about that. It's not just my appearance. I'm... Do you mean it? That it wouldn't be any trouble having me around? I absolutely mean it. Okay. I'll consider it. Wonderful. I can't wait to see you again. Yeah. Believe me, I knew I had no place involving myself with her. A killer making himself comfortable in the house of God. I don't even believe in their deity, and I still knew that it was a thing if not extremely disrespectful. The money I had donated to her church wasn't even clean. It was stolen. I didn't even feel the slightest bit guilty about it, though. I was more conscious of what I was doing, but none of it mattered to me. She had smiled when she took it. That was enough. Seeing that nun smile put my heart at ease. Much like the sound of the slave girl's voice had several years before. It restrained me, suppressed my urges. That smiling face was my new tether. I had always believed that I was at my happiest while torturing people. That my thirst for murder was ingrained in my soul. But as exhilarating as taking others' lives was, there was a part of me that yearned for peace. I would gotten a taste of that with her, and I wanted more. Even knowing that I had no place in that world, that peace was something I would never attain, I still longed for it. It started with brief visits every few months. In time, though, their frequency began to increase. Soon it was once a month, then twice, then once a week. The length of my visits gradually grew as well. Every time I showed up, the nun greeted me with a smile, quenching my thirst without the need for blood. The more we met, the more I endeavored to be a normal man around her, or to play the part of one. I thought if I acted as if there was nothing wrong with me, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be out of the place by her side. I just wanted to feel like I belonged in that peaceful world where she lived. That's the giant man! Mary, the giant man's here! Giant man. Giant man. Giant. Oh, hello there. I was beginning to think you weren't coming this week. I was having trouble deciding on what to bring you. You're always welcome here, you know. You don't have to brave yourself in, but I appreciate it, thank you. I wouldn't feel right if I didn't bring something. I brought a variety of fruits for you today so you can share them with the children. <laughs> They'll be delighted. Thank you so much. It's nothing, really. So, have you decided on a name for yourself yet? Not yet, no. Nothing at all. It makes talking to you a little awkward. Not having anything to call you. In that case, the giant man is as good as anything. <laughs> Did he get under your skin? A little. I'm not that big, am I? We're all giants to little kids. I do wish to be a little less blunt about it sometimes, though. Indeed. I suppose it's better than being afraid of me. The children here have strong nerves. They're ordinary kids. You're just not a scary person. They only assume I'm harmless because I'm with you. What? You make it sound like you actually are dangerous or something. Because I am. Don't get worked up about it. The only different, the only thing different about us is our race. Everything else is exactly the same. I'm not so sure. You must have had some pretty awful experiences because of your appearance then to make you so concerned about it. I wish I could say I understood your pain. 
That's not necessary. But if I could, then maybe I'd feel a little closer to you. If only I could be even half the same age as you. You have nothing to gain from being more like me. You don't think so? I think there's a lot that would be nice about it. I would probably have really pretty black hair at least. If I'm ever reborn, I'd like to be more like you. Why are you so obsessed with being like me? Hey, doesn't she get that? When she's reborn? I think so, yeah. I think I think that that wish gets granted. Yeah. She, she. She, she. I, I, um, I just am. Oh. Yeah. That was about the time I noticed the feelings that she had for me. At first, I thought it was simply me being egotistical. There was no way a woman like her would be interested in a man like me. But I couldn't think of any other explanation for the way that she looked at me. My, my camera started falling to the side. I looked like I was like leaning over. I'm like, Ooh. Back then, I believed I loved her too. And that if we could be together as man and woman, that I would finally be able to attain the peace I sought. That I could wash my hands of the killer within me, defeat the urges once and for all. That I could step out of the darkness I had lived in for so long. That I would be able to see the light. That I would be able to experience love like any other ordinary man. So in the name of hope, I took action. That foolish, naive hope. What are we doing out here so late at night? Sorry for asking you to meet me on such short notice. I was hoping it wouldn't be too much trouble to sneak out. It certainly wasn't easy. So you had something to tell me? What I'm about to tell you, every last word of it is sincere. And once you've heard me out, I want you to turn me down. What? Over these past few months, I've come to at least somewhat understand the responsibilities and restrictions placed on you as a nun. But even ignoring the obligations you have, I know good and well I'm not a suitable match for you. Which is why, as I said, I would like you to turn me down. I still... I still want to hear it. I love you. No, it makes sense that she would think that he loves her. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense now. <clears throat> I fell for you the moment I first saw you. I... I know I don't deserve to be anywhere near you. But every time we meet, my desire to be with you grows stronger and stronger until it was out of my control. Turn me down, Marie, please, and I will stop trying to get close to you. I'm not ready. You're not what? My real name is Pauline. Pauline? Many is my baptismal name. It's not the name I was given at birth. I... I love you too. I fell for you the moment I first laid eyes on you. I know it's forbidden, but I want to be with you too. Any free time I have, I want to spend it with you. I'm glad to hear you say that. Thank you for being honest with me. No, thank you for not turning me down. <laughs> well, I'll talk about an anxious day. When you asked me to meet you out here tonight, I wondered if that might be what it was about. It felt like my heart was going to explode all day. Heart explode? Guys get nervous about telling girls how they feel too, don't they? Yeah, we, we do. Until now, I had no idea falling in love was so hard on the nerves. Just thinking about you makes my mind turn to mush. It's hard to work, hard to work like that, you know. I feel the exact same way about you, Spell it. Mm -hmm. My mind, mm -hmm. my mind is mushy. No brain cell, just mush, just, just mash, mush, just mash potato brain. Just mash potato brain. <laughs> mash, um, can I have my mouse back real quick? Mash potato brain. Sorry, just a second. Uh oh, he broke. I broke. 
Oopsies, oopsies. Close. One second, folks. One second. Oh, the scuff. The scuff. Not the scuff. Not the scuff. It's fine. We we eventually gonna be switching to a different webcam thing, I think, and I'm hoping it'll work better than this one's been lately. Okay, okay. I almost, I almost fixed. Almost fixed. <laughs> there we go. You may have the mouse back. I don't need no more. Okay. Uh, the game has... Game? Pros? Game, hello. Hello. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're just gonna have to skip through everything, I think. Sorry, everyone. How did it do this to us? It's so rude. Oh, my computer's the same to fucking join in. <laughs> oh. itself is crashing. Just a moment, folks. Is the stream work work? I have no fucking clue. It shows that it's working on my side, but I mean, that doesn't mean shit. <laughs> Ow. So many texts get through. Characters look like they're freaking out because of the speed. Yeah. Okay, everything is everything is cool again.
I'm going through slower so I don't skip it. Uh-huh. Hey, Papa. We almost there. about you makes it impossible to concentrate. <laughs> Tell me something about I mean, Pauline. Mm, what is it? How exactly is it hard on your nerves? What? Uh, how exactly? It's like, um, I'm in the clouds and I want to scream and I want to jump into a lake all at the same time. That doesn't help me much. Could you be a little more specific? Really? Are you trying to embarrass me? It's like my whole body gets really hot. You mean you get aroused? <laughs> aroused? No, no, I'm a... Yes, yes. To put it bluntly, yes. I see. You're a real jerk, you know? You shouldn't go around trying to humiliate ladies. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, you. Yeah. Well, that was insightful. So I'm not in love with her, or romantically attracted to her, or even physically attracted to her. All I want from her is her smile. Being around her doesn't arouse me. Doesn't. In fact, it does exactly the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Yuki Masa, what the fuck? At least he's honest, I guess. Oh, to, to himself and to us, not to her. <laughs> My fire and burns brightest when I'm not with her. It all makes sense now. I just want someone to keep me placated. I'm disturbed through and through. A murderer and a beast. <laughs> See, that's why I didn't want to say anything. I knew you would laugh at me. I'm sorry. I truly am. I did ultimately get what I wanted out of the arrangement. She became my tether, an invaluable part of my life, even if I had no real love for her. When I was with her, I was at peace. That said, her presence didn't completely rid me of my urges. I was still occasionally struck with bouts of insatiable thirst, overwhelming desire to mutilate anyone who came into my line of sight. And sometimes, Pauline became the object of that desire. It goes without saying that I never did draw my sword on her, but I had no way of knowing when I might lose control. And if I ever did kill her, then there would be nothing left to keep me from regressing completely into a beast. Pauline and I arranged regular nighttime meetings, though I never did once tell her truly how I felt. I had no intention to either. When I was with her, I was in the role of her lover. She never questioned my love for her, and she expressed hers for me, causing her to smile more than normal. The happier she was, the more beneficial it was to me. Spending time with her in this capacity, I was able to gain a deeper understanding of what kind of person Pauline was. She was deeply generous and a compassionate woman. While I now understand her near compulsive deeds of charity were a result of stress, and uncertainty that she felt about herself. At the time, I believed she was doing it because she genuinely, genuinely wanted to. I believe she wanted to save absolutely everyone to be the safest that she'd come to be known as. She gave assistance to anyone who sought it from her, without question. And as a result, the church coffers quickly dried up. Her god did not supply her with an endless store of bread and wine either. In the end, any endeavor, no matter how the intentions, require money. In time, her generosity turned excessive, self-destructive. She would even skip meals so that others could eat. In retrospect, that was probably my fault, too. I, as I pushed towards her wanting to be a regular girl, she pushed back against that desire by being even more charitable. Soon her actions started making the other nuns' lives difficult. 
giving her a less than favorable reputation within the church. Still, she would tell me when we met up about how she wished she could help even more people. If doing so would give her peace, and if I could be a part of that peace, then I wanted to grant her wish. But what could a killer like me do to help? Petty thievery wouldn't get me nearly enough money to keep a church and an orphanage running. And a rage large enough in scale to do so would inevitably be traced back to the source, which would ruin the church back for which would ruin the church forever. How was a murderer to acquire such a large sum of money? I was ready to jump at any opportunity that presented itself. When I received a summons from the Lord. I think that you're the oriental man who's been buzzing around our local church of late. Jacob Paul! That is rude. You can't just say that. It's fucking rude. Smack, smack. Smack, smack. Smack, smack, smack. No books for you. When I first saw the Lord, I was surprised by just how young he looked. There couldn't have been more than a couple years difference between us. I had envisioned him as elderly, or at the very least, a middle-aged man. That would be me, yes. What of it? Who do you think you're talking to, you impudent rat? Show some damn respect. Apologies, I'm not familiar with the local customs or language. Hmm. Very well, then. You're fortunate I'm such an understanding man. Now, for the reason I called you here. You're the one who killed that cart full of slaves four years ago, aren't you? So you know about that. <laughs> I wasn't actually sure it was you, but now I have confirmation. Since then, one slave of Far Eastern Origin has remained unaccounted for. I take it that would be you. That's right. You made one hell of a mess out there. Am I here to be punished? That depends on how our talk goes. Hello, son! Son has returned. E bonk. Bonk. Bonk, bonk. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Shh, shh, shh. Shh, shh, shh. <clears throat> if you think I'm going back to being a slave, you're fooling yourself. I don't need any more damn slaves, and I certainly don't want you as one. You're obviously not finding any respectable work being an ex-slave, so I take it you're still in the business of getting your hands dirty, are you not? I assume you're playing cat burglar or something, living off whatever you can swipe from the nearest unlucky bastard. Correct. Isn't it comical then that you would choose God's sacred house to stretch your legs in, you filthy dog? I absolutely agree. I thought that would get a reaction out of you, but it seems you've got no bite in you today. Never mind, let's get down to business. You're going to help me out with a little something I'm working on. Help you with what exactly? Something that's going to make me a lot of money. And if you lend a hand, I'll make sure you're well taken care of. Along with the church you're so fond of, and the nun you've taken a liking to. That nun of yours has made quite the name for herself. Out in the city proper, people have started calling her the Saintess. They're right about that, she is. <laughs> the commoners love their heroes and saints. They eat that rubbish right up. But, saint or not, you can't simply create food from nothing. Her work is causing financial troubles for the church, is it not? It is, yes. If you help me with this, I'm offering you an entirely new church. One where she has complete control to do as she wishes. She'll make herself she'll make it into the biggest church in the city. She'll make herself into the biggest church. That's <laughs> where I was going with that. She will become the church. It's like how Jesus was bigger than a baby but smaller than a temple. Yeah. Maybe he was he was a temple. He was just a tiny temple. A tiny temple. A tiny temple. <laughs> I'm imagining like a tiny temple with like a beard and a staff. <laughs> it's like the size of a small dog. He'll be able to help even more people, which should surely please her. What would you have me do? Jumping at the first whiff of scrap. You really are a dog, aren't you? I don't like conversations that overstay their welcome. Huh, fair enough. Then let's get to business. Not far from here lives a witch whose blood has the power to cause miracles. Miracle blood sounds like a sham to me. You never know. They say the sound of her first cry brought rain to the land where she was born, saving the whole village from drought. 
and they say her blood has the power to cure any disease. I'll worry about the veracity of the rumours later. Right now, all I want is for you to capture her and bring her to me. Explain something to me, Lord. You said if I help you, the nun would be able to save more people than she does now. So how does capturing this witch accomplish that? I'm glad you know how to listen, dog. We'll be turning the blood into a miracle elixir, which she will then distribute to the patrons of the church. In exchange for pounds, of course. Selling it, then. Selling isn't quite the right word, but if that's how you want to think of it, by all means. The commoner's beloved saint is handing out an all-powerful medical medicine. Don't laugh it up. And in turn, you'll make a fortune. Exactly. Money I can use to support our church. It'll be a boon to the city's economy as well. A single witch's freedom is all it'll cost for everyone here to come out happy. So what will it be? Will you help? Or will I have to... I'll help. I have no reason not to. Decisive and a good listener. Excellent. 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 Once I've captured the witch, where do I take her? I'll have a mansion set aside where your nun can run our church. There's an observation tower on the ground. The witch will be kept locked up there to ensure we have a constant supply of blood. Okay. When do you want me to get her? You're just chomping at the bit now, aren't you? I thought you'd hesitate at least a little, but I guess it was foolish of me to presume to understand how a killer's mind works. All the resources I put into investigating you and everyone close to you were wasted, it would seem. Do you even have a conscience? Don't act like you're any different. I assure you I have a conscience. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't necessary for the growth of the city. No, I mean you're as much a murderer as me. You would never come up with a scheme like this if your hands were clean. Watch your mouth, dog. Don't you dare insinuate I would ever condescend to your level. <coughs> Asshole. Dick. <coughs> Con. <coughs> Pasta. <coughs> Prick. <laughs> Tiny temple. Tiny <laughs> temple. <laughs> I agree to the Lord's terms. Oh, are you sneakily doing stuff on the side? No, I was reading message. Ah, uh, I see, I see. I just heard extra clickies and I was looking at the screen. I'm like, why do I, I hear I was reading a message that was sent to me and then I had to go back to the list of names. Ah, uh, I see, I see. A couple of days later, I made my way out to the location the Lord had given me. A small cottage by the lake where the witch was said to live. I had been instructed to take her alive. But not that I wasn't allowed to harm her, so my plan to force my way in and immobilize her as soon as she opened the door. Were you struggling there? Yes. I've got like something in my eye that's been burning for the past couple of hours on and off. I think it's like an allergy thing. That's not good. So I've been struggling to read <laughs> this oh, entire no. time. Oof. The Lord was right. I didn't have anything resembling a conscience. I was too far gone to be bothered by the prospect of disabling a witch. Not even the fact that I'd found a degree of solace in my relationship with Pauline would change that. However... Who's there? When I heard the witch's voice through the door, I froze. But it was the girl from four years earlier. I didn't even have to see her, I knew right away. I wouldn't mistake that voice, that stream of pure clear water cutting through the grime for anything. I would never forget the first thing that I had managed to suppress my desires, my first ever tether. When the Lord told me about the witch, I had never once expected it to be her. Who is it? Are you the witch with the miracle blood? My hand rested on the hilt of my sword. I had at first meant to break down the door, if she wouldn't open it to me. Please leave. However, when I heard that voice, my hand fell limp. 
Please stay away from my home. I am in need of your blood. Could you not spare a little? I have nothing to spare for a man like you. My blood is only for the sick and needy. So please, go away. Stay away from me. I'm begging you. Get away from this place. You're a murderer. I want nothing to do with you. So please, just go away. As you say. As she had commanded, I took my leave of her cottage in somewhat of a haze. It should have come as no surprise, but in the four years since her last encounter, she had no kind words left to spare me. Yet even in her derision, I still felt myself calmed by the sound of her voice. I debated with myself. Should I do as the Lord requested and capture her? Or should I let her go free as I'd done four years earlier? You already know what I decided to do, though, don't you? That's right, I went with the first option. After all, I had no need for two tethers. While breaking down her door was still an option, the witch was very wary of me. If she were to somehow manage to escape, there was no saying how the ward might react. So I stood watch, waiting for her to step outside. The problem was she never opened her door. It wasn't just me. It seemed she was wary of everyone. There was one exception, though. The boy. She left the cottage for him. They went on walks together around the lake. It's uh, been a while since we went on one of our walks, hasn't it? I haven't been sleeping much taking care of Nelly. Is her condition worsening again? Yeah. Rest assured I will give her my blessing as many times as she needs. Thanks. I really appreciate it. The weather's kind of not great today, huh? Looks like we might get rain. It's probably not smart to stay out much longer. Yes, the day. I should get going. See you. Watching the two of them, it occurred to me that I could make good use of the boy. You have two options. Either you say no and protect the witch. Get away. Or you help me capture her. Get away from her right now. And if you choose the witch, I kill the girl. Get away. Make your decision. Get away from her. You have until the count of ten. If you don't choose, I kill the girl. Three. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, uh, six, five. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll help you. So get your sword out of her face. Don't kill her. I thought you'd hold out until the last second. Mm. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get going. <sighs> Get moving. <laughs> you pitiful little boy. your share should last you long enough.
Why? Why? <laughs> The witch with the miracle blood had regressed into an ordinary girl and she cried in pain like a small child. I wasn't going to get very far with her wailing, so I gagged her, tied her up, and threw her into a burlap sack. Nothing personal, I just lose your blood. Without it, she'll lose her church. She needs the money. I need some way of getting enough money to keep her church running. So the Lord made me an offer. I brought him the witch with the miracle blood, he would finance a whole new church for her. So don't take it personally. I tossed the sack into the cart I had waiting outside, and then made my way to the mansion as per the Lord's instructions. The two of us locked the witch in the observation tower. When I told the Lord I had used a boy as bait to get her to open the door, he gave an exasperated sigh and said, Involving a third party was not part of the plan. Is there anything at all in that head of yours, dog? I can kill him if that's a problem. Don't be hasty. Describe him for me. Did he seem like he came from a wealthy family? He's young, still in his teens. He lives with his little sister. He looked reasonably well off, probably of noble blood. You picked one hell of a target to use as your bait. Should I kill him? There are people in this world you can make disappear quietly. People no one will notice if one missing. Which probably would be the case for Mel, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. You're one of them. The boy, he most likely isn't. Was the boy at all interested in the witch's blood? He seemed to be. Well, that makes things a little easier. We just have to make him into an accomplice then. That's everything up to about six months ago. You know what happened next, I presume. I threatened Mel, forced him to join us. He needed the blood for his sister, but even without that excuse, he didn't have the courage to run. Me, on the other hand, I involved myself with my own free will. I had no reason to try and get back up. In fact, being put in charge of one of the three keys gave me an excuse to meet up with her more often. The arrangement was quite beneficial for me. I heard the news. You were selected to be part of the world's personal guard. Now you've got it made. Congratulations. You exaggerate, it's nothing. Oh no, no need to be humble. He wouldn't have picked you if he really didn't trust you. Excuse you. Excuse you. Everyone around here knows just how hard it is to earn the world's trust. If you say so. It hasn't been easy for him, I hear. He only assigns those he really trusts to work so close to him. <sighs> I hope you're right. He trusts you, I'm sure of it. I certainly can't tell her the real reason I suddenly became his guard. And I've got some more exciting news too. The Lord sent a messenger for me earlier. Apparently he's building a new church and he wants me to serve as a nun there. Can you believe it? You shouldn't be surprised. You are the city's saintess after all. It's a little wonder why you would be his first choice. I really don't think I'm that important. Do you not want the position? No, no, I'm delighted to have such an incredible opportunity. This will allow me to help so many more people than before. It's... it's wonderful news. That's good to hear. 
Tell me. I'm not in the wrong in thinking that pe helping people is one thing you want more than anything else, am I? Right. That's what I want more than anything in the world. I see. Hey. Um, smile for me, would you? Hmm? I've been smiling this whole time, haven't I? Not just now. Forever. Before. When I'm with you, nothing could possibly take the smile off my face. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why the fuck are you saving? What's going on? <laughs> uh, this is where you have it marked. We're with the end. <laughs> For some reason. The fuck knows why I've marked this as the spot to end. It seems kind of awkward, doesn't it? It does, yeah. <laughs> Guess we're done. <laughs> Do we want to let him finish his story? Um... I guess. Do you want to end at the awkward spot or do you want to let him finish I mean, I think course? it's funny to end it here. <laughs> okay, we'll end it here then. It's fine, I need to go get some fucking headache medicine anyway, because, like, I do not feel well. No feel well. I do not feel well. It's a shame. A big tragedy. <sighs> anyway. What do we have going on this week, hmm? We have Resident Evil 6 tomorrow. What? Resident Evil 6? Never heard of her. Never heard of her. No. Never heard of her. Um, I think we're in Chapter 3 of Jake and Sherry's route. I... Oh, he gave me my last back. I can actually check. Hold on. Hold on. Chapter 3. Yes. Chapter 3. Um, and then on Friday, we have Down the Rumpa Trigger Happy Havoc. We have... Um, where, where are we? We're in Chapter 5. I think we're at the trial for Chapter 5. Um, yes, 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 um, there may or may not be a stream on Saturday, we do not know, um, it's the start of Pride Month, we might be doing something, so, um, do not know, oh. might be a stream Saturday, might not be, do not know, do not know, it's just gonna depend on how long stuff takes us to finish. <sighs> And if we're going on Saturday or Sunday to the parade. You got rid of... Stop, 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 stop. You got rid of something that we haven't seen yet. So? Yes. Oh, right. Okay, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> You've moved it around. I see what it is now. Yeah, Oopsies. yeah. Thank you for putting up the links, son. We appreciate Appreciate. And uh, don't forget to come by next Tuesday to watch Spirit draw me in chibi form in a box. <laughs> <laughs> because you're you're doing it. You're you've been assigned. I have been assigned that task. Yes. You have been assigned. I have been assigned. And the best part is that the person who requested doesn't have to pay because it's me me enough to be funny and it's fine. I want it too. Yeah. So I will pay you in kisses. Mm -hmm. I. Do not feel well enough to read anyone today, so unless you want to take responsibility for it, I think we're just not going to. Is that I'm fine? I'm just not bothering. Okay. Sorry. I feel kind of ill and need to go and take care of some things. But anyway, keep it creepy. Keep it weird. Most importantly, stay, stay cool. We are. Bye. Bye.